Hello and welcome to this video tutorial guide for my board game Black Metro. Black Metro is a area control and worker placement hybrid game aimed at two to four players, takes 30 minutes per player for ages 14 and upward. The object of the game is to be the player who has acquired the most power or victory points at the end of six game rounds. Each game round is split into four phases. The assignment phase, where players will take personnel from their hideout and assign it to districts. The dominance phase, where players will compete to dominate at districts. The resolution phase, where players who still have their personnel remaining at districts will get to use those districts abilities. And finally, the standby phase, which consists of necessary administrative duties in preparation for the next game round. So running through each of those phases in a bit more detail. So the assignment phase has us take personnel from my hideout located here. So at the beginning of the game, most of the time you're going to start with two subordinates. They each have one strength. So what, what you do on your turn is you take one or more subordinates, you choose a district which does not already contain your personnel, and then assign those personnel to that district. So for example, I could take this one person and place him at say district four, or I could take both and do that as my one action. What I can't do is drop one personnel at district four, and then when it gets back to my turn, drop us another person at district four. I have to commit wholly to the district in one action. So the assignment phase starts with the crown holder, which is randomly assigned at the start of the game. After which, depending on who dominates the most districts will determine who possesses the relic going forward. But play takes clockwise from, from the relic player, assigning your personnel to districts. And then once everyone has assigned their personnel, the assignment phase ends. So it's a very quick example for a two player game. Let's just say something like this. There, fine. So that would that would end our assignment phase. We will then go to the dominance phase where we will compare strength at districts. And in this example, we can see that blue and red each dominate two districts. So this, each subordinate has one strength, and because there's no one else contesting they each dominate two districts and therefore red and blue would each get to power for doing so. Now if it's a tie like this then as it is intuitive no no one would dominate this district and there would be no uh, power gained for either of these two players. <clears throat> Where things get a little interesting is when there is a difference in strength between the between two players at the district. So here blue's got two strength and red has one strength. So as as normal, blue would get would still get a victory point or a power. And red as a consequence would increase their strain by one. 
So strain strain is a resource, and I'll get to I'll get to the resources in a bit. But basically, if a player would ever go beyond fifteen strain, for every access that goes beyond that fifteen, they start losing equivalent power. So strain is something players need to manage throughout the game, particularly as the game progresses into the later rounds. There's also an overwhelm mechanic, which I will run through now as well, while we are talking about the dominance phase. So, if we go back to our example here, um, we're going to chuck this Paragon down. So Paragons are basically better subordinates. They have two strengths instead of one. So when the difference in strength between a winning player and any losing player is three or more, what happens is this personnel, this subordinate, gets kind of overwhelmed. He gets scared and he, he runs away. And what this means is that during the resolution phase, Red would no longer be able to resolve this district but putting that putting that to one side for the moment so once domin do the dominance phase ends once we have contested dominance for all districts so going back to our original example i believe it was something like this so two points each and then we go to the resolution phase which is now done in district initiative again. So starting at district one, blue has the ability to use one, both, or neither of these abilities, but they have to be done in listed order. So the options for blue here is to do effect one only, to do effect two only, to do both effects one and two, to do neither effect one or two. But what they can't do is do effect two and then effect one. But so once blue resolves district one, then it will go to district two and so on. We just go around the board until everyone has resolved their districts. And as you resolve districts, you can take your personnel and return them to your hideout just to speed the process up a little bit. Now, I will run through what each district does in more detail shortly. But for now, once the resolution phase is concluded, we then do some administrative duties during the standby phase. So that's it's an opportunity to score missions, fulfill, uh, receive backing from syndicates. All of these things I'll, I will explain in due course. But at a very high level, we repeat this process for six game rounds, and then at the end, we do a final scoring procedure, which then determines the ultimate winner. Okay, so if we go to a player's hideout, we have these four resources. So strain I've covered already. It's the bad resource. But here we have three other resources, gold, Intel and Draconian. So each of these three resources has specific uses. So gold is useful for promoting your subordinates into paragons and for building fortifications, all of which help you assert dominance by getting more strength onto the game board. Intel is useful for helping you heal your strain, and it's also used in research and technologies. Draconium is used for directing syndicates and also for research and technologies. So in our play area, we have on the right hand side is the backup with, with all of our units. We have our hideout along the top. We have an overwhelmed area. So 
whenever any of our personnel get overwhelmed, they get placed in this area here. And you can you can get them back, but you have to suffer additional strain equal to the strength of the units that are overwhelmed in order to do so. And finally, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of a help guide here. So if I just zoom in, you can see that you've got the phases and listed here. And then on the right, you have sort of a unit table with the each of the units and their strength. And then finally, we get, you have the final scoring table as well. To run through that very quickly, broadly speaking, for every failed mission is two strain, and then every two strain is minus one power, and then after which you start gaining power for the total strength. And this includes the total strength of your units in your or the personnel in your hideout, plus any fortifications you have on the game board. You get additional power for every charged technology you have at the end of the game, every three gold, every two intel, every draconium, and a destiny fortune as well. And then finally, your player mat has, well not finally, but you have a technology deck of 12 cards, and you have two upgrade cards here as well. So to run through each of the district's abilities, just to give you an idea of what each of these 12 districts comprising the Dark City do. So District 1 helps you get Draconium. And an important note is that it is the only surefire way of getting Draconium by visiting a district. There's no, no other district guarantees you Draconium. So the factory is often very hotly contested, especially in the later rounds. District 2 lets you roll the pink fortune dice, and it also lets you draw a fortune card. So if we just scroll here, you can see the pink fortune dice result is here. And effectively, you have a one in three chance of the dice result being bad, but a two in three chance of it being good. And what the fortune cards do, if I just draw one as an example, uh, yeah, that's a better example. We'll leave the ace out as well. So the fortune deck is based on a standard deck of playing cards. So the numbered cards 2 to 10 and the ace as well are effectively temporary workers. So, so during the assignment phase, on any of your turns in the assignment phase, before you assign your personnel to a district, you can choose to play one of these cards. And when you do so, all you, all you do is you match the number at the top right to the district number. <coughs> so in this case, we've got a two. And then you immediately get to resolve the first effect of that district. So basically, on my turn, I could play this two roll the die, and then in this case, you also increase the corresponding resource by one as depicted below the, the number of the fortune. So in this case, because it has the strain sign, after I roll the pink fortune dice, I would have to increase my strain by one. Uh, the thematic is that this guy is a bit of a, or this lady rather, is, um, Bit of a grumpy worker, grumpy temp worker, you could say. But after that card is resolved, I would then take my person and assign him to a district as normal. 
I could assign them to District 2 as well if I wanted to, but I could go somewhere completely different. It, it doesn't really matter. ACEs are special in that they can either be used as District 1 or 11, depending on the player's preference. So ACEs are very powerful. District 3 allows players to get gold. District 4 is for intel. District 5 helps you get a bit of gold and a bit of intel. But it also allows you to get more personnel. So during each standby phase, all players will recruit one additional subordinate, regardless. So your, to your total number of actions is, generally speaking, going to increase by one each round anyway. But if you want to further accelerate your recruitment, you can basically recall three subordinates. So on your turn, you'd have to put three subordinates here. And just to make it clear, we will do that right now. Um, there we go. And when you resolve this district, you'd basically take all three of them back. And then you take another subordinate and add it to your hideout. Which means for future rounds, you'll have an extra action. The, the idea being that you're sacrificing actions in the short term to generate actions in the longer term. District 6 allows you to heal a small amount of strain. And it also lets you draw a fortune card. District 7 allows you to spend some intel to heal a large amount of strain. And it also lets you recover one personnel. So the other way of recovering personnel without incurring an additional strain penalty is to go to the hospital. District 8 allows you to research technologies. Okay, so how technologies work is that there's four different colors. You have blue for logistic, you have red for battle, yellow for resource, and green for Neuro. And the reason I've said that in that specific order is that each technology corresponds to a specific phase of use. So blue technologies are used during the assignment phase, red during the dominance phase, <clears throat> yellow during the resolution phase, and green during the standby phase. Now, depending on your play style, will influence what type of technologies you may want to research. But broadly speaking, blue technologies support your positioning of units on the game board. Red technologies help you assert dominance during the dominance phase. Yellow technologies help you get more resources and green technologies help you manage your strain. Now at the beginning of the game, you can only research these four technologies here. But as the game progresses, we also have an upgrade system, which I will cover momentarily. But basically, in order to research the higher level technologies, say this one for example, you'll see there is a number, an upgrade number on the top left of the card. And basically what that means is one, you can only research this technology once you've unlocked your, your upgrade one. 
that's basically it for technologies. District 9 lets you spend gold to build and move fort forts, shorthand for fortifications. So basically, these are fortifications, blockades. So when you, when you build a fort, you choose any district which has an unoccupied uh, fortification zone and you just place your fortification at that district. And so basically, fortifications or the block blockade specifically have one strength. The difference being is that fortifications can be moved. So the second effect here, spend one gold, move any one fortification. That, that means you can move your own fortifications, but you can also move other people's fortifications. So for example, let's just say Blue had a fortification at the lab and we, we didn't like that. We can we can spend the gold and we can just move this to any other you know un unoccupied fortification zone. Say, dump it at District Eleven, for example. To resolve a district, you need to have personnel, not fortifications. So even though I have a fortification here, during the resolution phase, if I didn't have any if I didn't sign any of my personnel to District Nine, I wouldn't be able to resolve District Nine. So that's kind of where fortifications are at. They're a way of getting extra strength onto the game board to fortify specific districts that you may be interested in in visiting frequently, or hidden, or making it harder, or punishing people for going other players for going to those districts. District ten. Let's just spend three gold to promote one subordinate. So promotion effectively takes a subordinate that is on the game board or in your hideout and replacing it with a special personnel, in this case, Paragon. So you, tr you effectively trade a one strength subordinate for a two strength Paragon. And that, that's all there is to, to the promotion mechanic. District 11 lets you spend a draconium to direct a syndicate. And the second effect lets you draw a mission. So we just go down here. So at the beginning of the game, depending on the number of players, X minus one syndicates will be dealt out. So in, in a two player game, we'll just have the one syndicate. And during the standby phase, a single player can receive backing from one syndicate if they fulfill the criteria. So let's just take a uh, let's take a four player example. So in a four player game there'll be three active syndicates. But let's just say player red has the most intel and the fewest strain. Even though they satisfy the requirements for both of these syndicates, they only get to receive backing from one. However, it's still good to try and cover as many syndicates as possible because you prevent other players from trying to get those syndicate power points. As you have to have the most or the fewest of whatever criteria is being specified. So if two players tie for the most intel, no one, no one can receive backing from this from the intel syndicate for that game round. Now, directing a syndicate is the process of taking one of any of these active syndicates, putting it in a discard pile, and then placing the top card from the syndicate deck into the active syndicate zone. The idea being that if someone is constantly scoring a specific syndicate, you can 
you can get rid of it and flip something else. Or if you're unable to score any syndicates, then you know, likewise, you might be able to flip something that you can score, possibly. And the second effect of the tower is drawing missions. So there are two types of missions in Black Metro. One of them is fulfilled during the dominance phase. And one of them is fulfilled during the standby phase. So the dominance phase missions will always ask you to have the most strength at a specific district. So just zoom in here. So after you dominate at the lab, you just you get power based on your total strength at the lab. So in layman's terms, win win at the lab, and then depending on your total strength, depends on the amount of power you get or points. You can fulfill as many dominance missions during a single dominance phase as you wish, but only one dominance phase mission per district dominance. The standby missions, you can only fulfill one standby mission per game round, even if you have the ability, ability to fulfill more than one. Now, each of these missions has three options for the amount of power you can acquire. <clears throat> and the idea being that the further down the list you go, the more power you will acquire, but the harder it is to achieve. So in the ideal world, you want to try and aim for the bottom bullet for the bottom option as much as possible. But toward the end of the game, you have the option of at least potentially being able to, you know, fulfill the top option, get some quick power. Because for, ev for any mission in your hand at the end of the game that is unfulfilled, you will suffer two strain. The thematic is being that you have you've gone to the you've gone to the astral tower, which is the go the government of Black Metro, and they've given you a mission and you've not done it. So you get you get a bit of a telling off, basically, a bit of a scolding, as it were. <laughs> and finally, we have the District Twelve, the combat zone. So. Districts 1 to 11 each have this cog sign, which is called a facility. And what that means is any player with personnel at a facility can resolve that district's abilities. So we'll make that super clear. Um, here, if we go back up here, in this example, both blue and red would be able to resolve the factory because they both have personnel there. However, the combat zone is a little bit different. It has this, this icon here, which is a battlefield. So this battlefield icon basically means it's a winner takes all. Only the dominating player gets to utilize the effects of a combat, of, of a battlefield. So in this case, Red has a subordinate one strength, blue has a power one two strength. So when it comes to the, so blue asserts dominance here, is a dominating player. So when it comes to the resolution phase, only blue gets to use these effects. They would immediately acquire one power. And if they also happen to have the relic, they would acquire an additional two power as well. And unfortunately from red, that they're, subordinate has been a wasted deployment, a wasted assignment in this instance. And that covers the 12 districts in Black Metro. And the final thing, or things rather, that I want to cover for this sort of tutorial video 
is our candidates. So at the beginning of the game, you're gonna play you're gonna pick a candidate to play as. And for your first game, they're all they're all gonna be the same. You'll have a unilateral start. So you start with two subordinates, you get three gold, you get two intel, and you'll inflict three strain. And then on the opposite side, <coughs> you have your abilities. The top ability will refer to a specific district. In this case, it's District 11, the Astral Tower. But depending on who you play, it could, it could refer to a different district. And then the second ability of your chosen candidate is the unlock upgrade ability. Which is all which is always the same in the sense that the second ability is always unlock upgrade, but the criteria for unlocking those upgrades is candidate specific. So for your first game it will it will be the same for everyone. But once you start playing around with the other candidates, it will be the unlock upgrade requirements will be unique to each of those candidates. But basically, at the end of the resolution phase, you have you down the card. Down means you flip it over, and then you do the criteria. And you have to do this criteria in this order. So even if I had like four gold and two intel, if I haven't charged my first upgrade, I can't jump ahead and try and charge my second. I have to go down in this order. And these and for our and for the first game, charging upgrades. All it does is give us access to more power, potent technologies. And the final thing to cover is that on this top right hand side, you'll see that there's a specific fortune listed. So in this case, the Ace of Gold. So that, that reflects what this Destiny fortune is here. So if I had the Ace of Gold in my hand at the end of the game, I would get an extra three power and that's pretty much it for this fairly quick uh, intro vid into black metro hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching